Hi, I'm Sanjay Majumna. I'm a plastic surgery consultant from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. And this is the first of our series on suturing. Uh, the very first thing before we dive into the suturing is to know our kit and know how to handle the kit. So there are three, possibly four bits of kit that are hugely important for suturing. The first, of course, is a needle holder. Now, this needle holder is a ratcheted needle holder, meaning there's a ratchet mechanism just there. And you can see when you close it, it clicks in. You can hear that and you need to open it. Now I'm you intentionally using my middle finger and thumb to demonstrate because that is the wrong way to hold it. But it's the most common way I've seen people who are first starting to uh, suture use it. So how do you hold it? Thumb and ring finger. And then the needle holder rests on your middle finger and the index finger is there to direct it. And that gives you the best approach to um, suturing. Once you've got that, you pick up your needle, never handle it with your fingers, and then you click it shut, and it should stay wherever you put it. When you want to release it, you need to push, if I may take my hands away, push this, the one that your thumb is in, away from you, and the ring that your uh, ring finger is in, pull it towards you so that you open it like that. That takes a little bit of practice, but once you've done it a few times, you will get the hang of it. So that's your ratchet needle holder. So there are some needle holders without a ratchet, but we won't complicate matters with that just at the present time. The next bit of kit we have is our dissecting forceps. And this is a toothed dissecting forceps, meaning it's got teeth. And the purpose of tooth is to be able to grasp tissue. And whilst that's good, you've got to remember that the tissue you're suturing is going to be live tissue and it can be quite friable, it can be uh, vulnerable to injury. So never grasp too hard, don't grasp and really, really hold on and try never to grasp the epidermis with it. If you're gonna grasp anything, go deeper, go into the dermis. What is probably advisable for skin suturing is not to actually grasp at all, but to use one or the other tooth as a hook mechanism. So you just hold it and we'll, dem we'll demonstrate that when we're showing you how to stitch. Now. The best way to hook it is not actually with the dissecting forceps, but to use a skin hook. And then you can actually hook the skin, lift it and stitch, and we will demonstrate that uh, later on. However, most suturing kits don't tend to have a skin hook, even though it will give you the least amount of trauma to the skin. So you've got to get used to using a dissecting forceps. So that's your dissecting forceps. That's your skin hook, which is, as it says on the tin, a hook for the skin. And the final thing is our suture cutting scissors. And a suture cutting scissor is just a normal pair of straight scissors. And again, you hold it like you hold your needle holder, thumb and uh, ring finger. Just a word on holding needle holders and um, sutures. Don't hold it too tight. Don't hold it too far up your digits. Hold it in a relaxed fashion. Make it as an extension of your hand. And I always tell people, Pretend you're at a movie with your first date. If you're holding it too tightly, then your first date, well, they will get a little bit anxious that you're a bit too needy. If you hold it too loose, they will think you're maybe not uh, into any kind of commitments. So hold it just right. And that, in a nutshell, is the instrumentation and how you handle it.